guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mariela Lozano, if you're new here, and I post videos that document my life as a first generation student and share all the tips and knowledge that I gain along the way with you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And without further ado, let's get right into this video. As many of you know now by watching all of my videos, I go to ASU. Specifically, I'm at the Diapy Carey School of Business and I am a junior now, so I have a lot of knowledge of what the school has to offer and also how rigorous the coursework is. I got a comment under one of my videos that asked if I could kind of go over the preview or walk through what major courses look like. So I'm going to be doing that today. And the way I'm going to be splitting up this video is that in the first part, because there's going to be three parts, so the first part I'm going to be talking about what the major map is and what DARS is. So those are two different ways that we can track our progress towards our degrees and just make sure that we're on track to graduate. The second part that we're going to be covering is going to be talking about the different requirements that are within Diapy Carey. So these are going to be just pertaining to Diapy Carey School of Business. Um, I know ASU has a lot of them, so those are like the general studies and stuff, but I'm going to be talking about specifically what Diapy Carey students have to fulfill. Even if you're within like a different major, if you're a different major from me, we still have a lot of the same business core electives or business core skills classes that we have to take that will explain a little bit further in the video. And lastly, I'm going to be sharing all of the classes I've taken within IP Carry and kind of just give you guys any tips that I have for how you can master those classes or tell you how I pass the class um, using different resources. Maybe it was tutoring or maybe just creating like study groups or something. But yeah, that's basically how the structure of the video is going to go. And if you want to see specifically where that video part is going to be, just click on the timestamps down in my bio. All right, so first off is the DARS and major map. These are two quite different things, but they're very similar. So you might get them confused, but just to kind of break it down for you, the major map is just what it sounds like. It's in its name. It's going to be a map of everything that you need to complete within your eight semesters at ASU. If you're going to graduate early, then you probably have six semesters or less if you transferred with credit. So basically the major map is going to be your best friend because it's a lot easier to look at and less intimidating than the DARS. But once you also get the hang of the DARS, it's pretty much easy and you can just make sure that you're fulfilling everything. And basically the major map is just a more simplified version of the DARS report. And the DARS report is a lot more complex, but it does show you everything from AP credits being transferred from um, your high school, dual enrollment classes, and even if you're a transfer student coming in from a community college, it will show you all those classes. And another cool thing about the DARS is that if you're taking a class that is, say, like a cultural diversity class and you need another requirement to fulfill it, if you look through your DARS map, it will show you if it already double dipped into the same thing so you don't have to take that course later on. So once you get the hang of the DARS, it's pretty easy to understand. Alrighty, so I have my laptop right here and I'm going to be looking at it because I want to screen record at the same time that I'm doing this so you guys can see how to do it on your own time. Um, but literally it's super easy. So you go right here to your programs. It might look a little different for you if you have one major. Um, but I have two majors so I'll just click on the one and then I will open up my major map progress like this. Now I'll do the same thing with the DARS. And so basically I was just going to show you guys what the major map looked like. So this tells you if you're on track or off track for graduation. It's a pretty neat tool because as you can see I'm going through all the terms and it'll just tell me if I've met the requirement and it tells me the course right here on the left. And another cool thing about this is that it tells you what the critical major requirement is. So for term three, I have to complete math to 11 in term three. So I have the opportunity to do to 11 in term two, but I have to complete it by term three. So that's really important to look through your 
um, major math with because there are certain classes that you have to take ahead of time um, before you can take any other classes. And then that's also the same thing with the necessary requirement for your major. So I do have to take like Marketing 302, which I've already taken, um, Accounting 241, all of these classes right here require any of them with a star. So basically, this is what the major map is. Like I was telling you, it's just a little map and it's super helpful if you're lazy like me and just need something to look off and make sure that you're going to be completing your requirements. And I also, when I'm registering for classes, look off of this one because it's a lot easier to just make sure that I'm taking the classes that I need to take and that all the critical ones are out of the way. As for DARS, this one's a little bit more complex. It's right here. So I actually ran my audits earlier, so let me just delete them to make sure I have none. So when you're here, you're going to click on Run Audit. And once you're here, you're going to click Run Default pro Programs. Um, you can also do something else. Like if you're an honor student, I do honors right here. Area of interest, 36 hours, because I'm a full-time honor student. And then I'll just click Run the Default Program. But since I want to do these ones right here, I'm going to run declared programs, which are the programs that I am currently in at the Baby Gary School of Business. Alright, so now I have both of them. I'm going to click on marketing just because this was like my prior one and then I added on management, but I'm on track for both of them because the cool thing about Baby Gary is that if you're already in one of like the BS programs, then if you do like a BA, so I'm doing marketing, which is a BS, a Bachelor of Science, and then a Bachelor of Arts in Management, then a lot of the courses do double dip and the only ones that you have to take are the major core classes that we're going to cover in a little bit um, in the next section and what they actually mean. So basically, you come in here and it looks a little intimidating already with a little pie chart on the side and all these little graphs, but if you keep on going down, it tells you what everything is with the little titles on there and what they mean. And a lot of your advisors help you with it, so if you want to just look at your map and be like, hey, these are the classes I have to take, do you have an order in which I should take them? Or can you help me plan for next semester? They're more than willing to help you because that's what their job is to do. But basically, it tells you everything. And right here's the legend, like I told you, these are required, optional, unfulfilled, in progress, and complete. So basically, I have not completed these yet, so I have to go in and complete them before I graduate. What the DARS report looks like. It's just what it is a report of your whole years at ASU and what you still have to complete. It's just more in depth than the other one. You guys saw that we covered the major map and what the DARS was. Now we're going to be talking about the different requirements for the AP Carry students. So, like I mentioned before, even though I showed you these, I'm going to talk about like the different classes that we have to take as students within WP Carry because we do have to take a lot of them and it kind of might seem like a lot, but honestly when you're in the classes, it's not that much because it kind of breaks down. So I'm going to also show you guys while I'm doing this because I tend to forget a lot. So the first ones we're going to look at for WP Carry students is business skill requirement courses. Those are going to be right here, and we have eight of those. All of these classes are required for any business student to take. Um, if you're in a different program like accounting or sometimes finance, they have those different classes. So say instead of accounting 231, you'll take like accounting 242 for accountants, stuff like that. If you're like a finance major, then you'll take finance like 302 for finance majors. So they kind of switch around. They're not exact, but if you're like a marketing major like me, then these are the classes you will take. Um, and then it also changes with the degree program. So say like you're coming in academic year 2024, then you have to follow your major map for that because they change often because the business school can change their curriculum if they want to. So make sure you keep an eye out for that and that you're registering for the proper classes. And then next for business core requirements, this is the other set that you have to take as a business student. You have to take seven other classes. As well as if you're incoming, like you're barely coming in, um, you're going to have to take business career preparation courses where there's a set of three of those. And these courses basically are going to be those classes 
where they teach you how to build your resume, um, how to stay on top of like networking, stuff like that, that we need as business students that we can basically learn online. And so we have these classes that we take, but these are only 0.25 credits, I know, and we have to take a lot of these on top of a regular course load, which usually we have like the other classes, business course classes are three credits. These ones are only 0.25, but they're not that hard as long as you pay attention in them. Then we move on to your major core classes. So for marketing, I have five upper division courses that I have to take. These are the classes I have to take as a marketing major, and all of these will basically apply to you too if you're a business student at the UK, um, except some of them might change depending on your major. So those major core classes, those ones will change for you because if you're not a marketing major like me, then you'll have different ones. But like I was saying, it's a very similar pattern to what you're seeing here, and these are basically the classes that you will have to take as a business student. So you'll take a variety of them. So even though you're a marketing major, you're still going to have to take your load of finance classes, accounting classes, and beautiful math classes that we have to take. I'm still in my ASU, which yours will probably look the same once you get an ASU account, but I'm going to be under my classes and I'm just going to go through every single semester from semester one. No, cries. Cries about semester six now. So that's crazy. I graduate next year, basically. Let's say it's 2021 already. I graduate in 2022. So that's pretty freaking crazy. But yeah, let's get onto the program. My classes in fall 2018. I'll tell you guys about the diabetes carry ones that I took. So CIS 105 from my like top of my brain right now, remembering wasn't too difficult. I would go to class and just follow along with the professor, ask them questions if I did have any. But basically this class is all about testing your knowledge with Excel and they teach you how to use Excel and all that stuff um, to be better business students because everywhere we go, we're going to need Excel. And believe it or not, this class really helps prepare you for using Excel in your other classes because it just builds off of this one. So just make sure you pay attention in CIS because it does really give you that stepping stone that you need for the rest of your career. The other class is going to be Brief Calculus. I still had to take a math placement test for ASU and so I placed in to Brief Calculus. And this class was actually one of my favorites, but a lot of people struggle with it. And it's just a lot of calculus, um, pre-calc, it's the same thing as pre-calc, so I would just recommend going to the tutoring center if you really have questions about that. But um, it's a lot of algebra, which I love algebra, so it wasn't that much um, for me, but it's definitely a lot of derivatives and um, just, they teach you everything you need to know in that math class. And just like it sounds, it's brief calculus, so they just go through a lot of calculus equations and expect you to know how to do it. And then I had to take the IP Carry 101, which is super easy. I was actually a facilitator this semester, so I taught my own class of 18 students. And basically what you do in that class is it's a way to show you what Dipy Carry and ASU is all about and what they have to offer you as a student, any resources that we have available on campus to help you succeed as a business student. So on to semester um, spring 2019. So starting off with Accounting 231, I actually really enjoyed this course. I took it with Wolf and it was basically just an intro into what accounting is. Basically tell you a lot about what assets are, liabilities are, the stock is, all that stuff that you need to know in the business world. They kind of break it down for you and it's actually a really good class. I really liked it. If you like numbers then it'll be a really good class but I recommend going to the SI sessions. That's how I did really good in this class because there's leaders that are really great. Um, they already took the class and they passed it with an excellent grade and came back to be an SI leader. So you can go to them or you can also go to the tutoring center. They're very helpful there too. So this is accounting 231. This is the first part and this is financial accounting. The other accounting class that we take 
was Manicherio County, so they are pretty different. I took was 212 for Econ, which is microeconomics. I absolutely love this class. In this class, we just talked about microeconomics, so instead of looking at the whole picture, we looked at a smaller picture and we focused on kind of the suppliers and what people want. And then the next class I took was Math to 11, Math for Business Analysis. So this is the second part of kind of like after you take brief calc, you take 211. And I honestly didn't really like this class. Like I couldn't pay attention. We did a lot of math though. This class was more of like a statistics class. We did probability in there and I don't really like probability. So I did go to the training center for this one a lot. And I ended with an A minus, which I'm thankful for because I thought I was gonna get like a B minus or something after an exam that I took and I got a C on. But let's just not talk about that. It's going to be Debbie Carey 148. This is where I was saying that it's a sequential order in which you have to take 148, then 248, then 348, and then 44, which would be like your senior course class. So I took that one my spring semester of my freshman year. Then fall 2019, I took Econ 221 was business statistics. So I actually didn't mind this class. It was a lot better than math 211. This class basically we did probability but he broke it down to the point where it was easy to do and I ended up liking like the way that he taught so it wasn't that hard. This writing, this class I did a lot of essays for but it wasn't crazy. Like we create like our own little business as at least that's what I did in my class. I created my own little marketing business and I would have to create a memo letter, a business write-up plan, stuff like that that you have to do like in the real world. Um, and basically they just put your writing skills to the test and see if you know how to write formally as a business student. And for accounting 241, this is a class I took online and it was a managerial accounting class. I didn't really like it. It was a lot of math more than the financial one was as a surprise like to me, I don't know. And we just talked a lot more of like the management perspective of someone like throughout accounting. And then lastly, I did AP Carry 248, which was a sophomore career preparation class to spring of 2020. I did LES. This one was a hard class just because like the material that we're learning is about law. So I'm not that good at, you know, laws and stuff, but for this class I did have to do a lot of reading. So be prepared for a lot of reading in that class. So the next class I took in that sequence was Management 300. I really enjoyed this class. I had Professor Nick and it was just an overview of what management is and it just really made me realize that I probably wanted to add on that management major and so I did. Um, I liked it because it just went over basically how you should act as a manager and how you can apply it to yourself to become a better business leader. So we talked a lot about leadership versus management in that class which I really liked. Marketing 302 was one of my favorite classes, I had Professor Palmer and we just did an overview of what marketing majors and marketing managers would do in the real world scenario. So we had our own project and every semester actually I have a project in any of my marketing classes that I have like this. And so we work on a brand. I had Dutch Bros and we worked on that brand all semester long and just came up with a plan on how they can better improve their like strategies for marketing and all that good stuff. And then lastly was Supply Chain Management 300 for this semester and I actually really enjoyed that class. Believe it or not, I thought I was going to fail it but I ended up doing really well. Um, Javilla really put everything just out there and made everything super simple so if you read the book and went to lecture then you would pass the class like no problem. Fall 2020, which was this half semester, worst semester ever, but we made it through. I took a lot of credits this semester, but I did Finance 300, which was not bad at all. I took Sadusky and I loved his class. We talked a lot about stocks, bonds, um, time value money, stuff like that, but it wasn't hard equations. And since I already did accounting 231, 241 before, it was pretty easy because there was a lot of accounting required in the class. 
Then I did Management 320, which was Organizational Behavior. This is one of the requirements for my management classes. It wasn't that it was hard, it was just a lot of reading to do, and then we had a lot of cases in this class that we had to do. And the cases basically required you to read beforehand and prepare the questions and basically defend yourself like in a seminar class. Marketing research, Marketing 352, I liked it at the beginning. We learned how to use SPSS, which is like this program where you analyze data. At the end of the semester, I was just not having it, but honestly, it's not that bad of a class. It's just through Zoom, I got really tired. And I had a 95, it ended up going down to a 91 because we didn't do so well on our second project. Um, but it kind of isn't that bad because we don't have exams, so it's kind of like the project replaces it. So for that class, I didn't really go to tutoring, but one of my friends went to tutoring and I had a lot of group study buddies in this class. I had brand management. Oh my god, I love this class. So I want to be a brand manager. That's what I say like when I graduate. And I know it's going to take a little bit to get there, but um, I really enjoyed this class because it just went through everything that a brand manager looks at. So we talked about brand houses, house brands, stuff like that. And we also talked about the difference between a brand and a product. WPC facilitators class, this is because I was teaching my class. Then I did the honors directed study, WP Carry 492, and this is because I'm defending my thesis next semester, so I have to take that class. And then lastly, I took WPC 348, which is another sequential class, like I mentioned. Lastly, for next semester, I will tell you the classes I'm going to be taking. So I'm taking Management 400, which is cross cultural management. Management 430, which is negotiations. Marketing 402, which is consumer behavior. Marketing 493, which is the other part of the honors thesis class. And then lastly, organizational ethics, which is OGL 345. And whew, that was a lot. But that's basically all the classes that I have to take as a marketing major and just like as a business student at the IP Carry. So I hope this video helped and I know it was pretty long but I tried to sum everything up for you guys so that it wasn't that confusing and it all made sense. So I hope that was helpful and if this video was helpful and you want to see more like it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!